This video will present dermatologist level classification of skin cancer with deep neural networks. Convolutional neural networks are a branch of deep learning that maps images to class labels. A really popular way of understanding this is through examples of classifying images of cats and dogs, as shown in this image. The convolutional neural network takes as input an image and then uses a series of convolutional filters and other miscellaneous things that the deep learning community has come up with for computer vision applications and then maps the images into class labels, such as cat or dog. The idea here is to use the same kind of idea, but to detect skin cancer in, uh, in clinical images. So there are 5.4 million new cases of skin cancer every year that account for 10,000 annual deaths, but early detection of this is critical. And that's why this idea of being able to embed a dermatologist level classifier into your phone so you could just snap a picture of your skin lesion and instantly have this kind of diagnosis is a very appealing sort of idea. So the data set that they use in the paper consists of 129,450 clinical images including 3,374 dermoscopy images. And this data set showed on the these uh, this image is showed on the left of the slide is sort of what this data set would look like. So what they use to classify this is they start with transfer learning. And transfer learning is a really popular technique in uh, deep learning. That's why I've pictured the Swiss army knife at the bottom of this slide. So transfer learning is frequently used when you have limited data sets. So in this case, 100,000 images may seem like a lot, but it's really not that much for these deep neural networks, which are very data, data intensive. So the idea of transfer learning is you take a pre-trained network, such as the GoogleNet Inception V3, and you train on a big data set like ImageNet, which is 1.28 million images in 1,000 object categories. Then the final layer, the classification layer, is removed and replaced with a new layer for the new task. So one other interesting issue of using transfer learning is that the skin lesion images have to be resized to match the original input of the original data set. So the ImageNet images are resized as 299 by 299. And when you, so now when you use the skin lesion images, you have to resize them to that same input dimension. So the novel insight in this research paper is to construct a taxonomy of the output structure. And this is another idea that's been seen in papers like word to vec with these hierarchical output spaces. So the idea is that the convolutional network doesn't just directly predict the classes. Rather, it predicts probabilities for each of the classes and then these classes are traversed upwards and summed up to make the predictions. So you would use all the leaf nodes under leaf nodes under something like benign to aggregate the prediction to the final prediction. So you sum up the uh, little leaf nodes here, things like lipoma, fibroma, and cysts. You sum up all the leaf nodes and then aggregate that to be the benign prediction. And each of these uh, high-level classes, like malign, malignant, and uh, non-neoplastic, have their own uh, sets of leaf nodes, and also interestingly, they have uh, different cardinalities of leaf nodes. Like in this example, the non neoplastic higher level node has many more leaf nodes than benign and malignant. So, this is the high level overview of what it looks like. A skin lesion input is, image is inputted into this GoogleNet inception network, which has this structure of branching the uh, previous input into these four separate convolutional blocks and then aggregating them together and then it is mapped into this uh, taxonomy output space to make the predictions. So this is a TSNE visualization of CNN features. What a TSNE visualization does is it lets you go from the very high dimensional and completely impossible to visualize 2048 dimensional feature layer before the classifier, classifier output this prediction. And you can project this into a low dimensional representation so we can kind of see uh, what classification decision boundary the classifier might be able to do with the deep learning feature extractor. So in this case, you can see that there is a pretty clear separation of the orange, blue, green, and yellow classes, but there still is a significant overlap. You can see a lot of blue in the red and uh, yellow in the green. So these are the results from the CNN compared to the dermatologist. It outperforms the dermatologist by a good margin on the uh, three-way classification task where you are predicting the high-level nodes by traversing up from the leaf nodes. But then when you predict in the leaf nodes, it performs the same as the dermatologist. This is the confusion matrices of the uh, nine-way classification problem. And it's sort of interesting because 
the dermatologists and the CNN, they have some similar biases in their mispredictions. So you see that uh, predicting six when it's really zero is a common trend amongst the CNN dermatologist one and dermatologist two. Uh, when you deal with class imbalance data sets, like in this case, uh, I don't remember the uh, exact dimensions, but there might be like 130 melanoma images, 270 benign, or you know, some distribution that is skewed towards one class. So the way that you would account for this is by using these uh, metrics that account for imbalance. So sensitivity is where you take the true positive rate uh, and divide it by the positives. Specificity is the true negative by the negative. And this AUC area under the curve uh, shows the trade-off between the two as you change the decision boundary. So you might say if it's, uh, you know, if the prediction lies above a certain value like 0 0.5, then you predict it one way or the other. And you can slide that up and down to optimize for sensitivity or specificity. <laughs> so these are the sal saliency maps, which is another uh, common practice in computer vision to try and highlight what the CNN is looking at to make its prediction. And it's pretty encouraging because it is uh, accurately looking at the... Uh, at the skin lesion rather than uh, arbitrary parts of the image. Thanks for watching this video on skin cancer classification with deep learning. You can get the full paper link in the description. After watching this video, I highly recommend checking out this video explaining in detail the InceptionNet architecture that they use. Thanks for watching Henry AI Labs. Please subscribe.